Hey, 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 how's it going? Do it yourself first. Today we're gonna to do a quick video and talk about how a boxer engine works and operates, how it's different to other types of common engine designs and also what are the pros and cons of a boxer engine. All right, so in short, a boxer engine is an engine that revs with a lift and has spent time in prison for assault charges. All right, so kidding aside, in order to understand how a boxer engine works, We'll first quickly go over the different types of engine, uh, common engine designs out there. First up, the inline four cylinder. So on an inline four cylinder engine, your piston goes up and down vertically. So it goes through the four strokes, which are suck, squeeze, bang, blow, money shot. Now on a V-shaped engine, whether it's a V8 or a V6, you have two banks. There's one cylinder head missing on this one because I removed it, but you have equal number of cylinders in each bank and they're at an angle. It's either 60 degrees or 90 degrees. And for V8s, which is this guy right here, it's uh, 90 degrees usually. All right, so again, an inline four cylinder, pistons go up and down vertically. A V-shaped engine, whether it's a V6 or a V8, pistons go back and forth at an angle. Now a boxer engine, you just keep going. The pistons go back and forth at exactly, or horizontally exactly. Now you can think of a boxer engine as a V-shaped engine, but instead of uh, you know 90 degrees between the two banks, you have 180 degrees between the two banks. But I should mention that a boxer engine is a type of a flat engine. Now, not all flat engines are considered boxer engines, however. What makes uh, a boxer engine a boxer engine, and these are two cylinder heads from a Subaru EJ25, which is probably the most well-known boxer engine out there, the other one probably being the Porsche boxer engine, is that the cylinders go outward and inward or away and then back again towards the crankshaft which is in the center of the, the engine at the same time. That's what makes it a type of a flat engine that's also a boxer engine. Now I really wish I had the cylinder block that goes with these two cylinder heads but that engine block had a thrown rod and a hole on the side of it so I recycled it. But anyway, I worked a lot on Subarus on this channel. I'll try to put some footage on the screen. So that will hopefully help you out and understand how this works. But next, let's talk about what are the advantages of a boxer engine. So all boxer engines have low primary vibration because again, the pistons move back and forth exactly at the same time and they cancel out each other's momentum. All right, so another noteworthy advantage of a boxer engine is that you have, since you have a wider engine rather than a taller engine when you compare it to an inline engine design or a V-shaped engine design, or in other words, when the cylinder heads are on the side of the engine, rather towards the top of the engine, you have a lower center of gravity. When you have a lower center of gravity, you reduce body roll. You know, when you're making turns or going around corners, you reduce body roll. And when that happens, you improve traction and handling. And also the lower profile of these types of engine allows for a much more smoother power transmission from your engine to your transmission. Since uh, your engine as a whole is on the more of a even plane compared to the rest of the drivetrain, the power transmission is smoother. Now this doesn't really necessarily uh, affect efficiency as in improving your MPG, however it just simply improves the ride quality. And last but not least, the lower profile engine like this boxer engine is safer in case of an accident or specifically a head-on collision because in, when a, in a head-on collision, the lower profile engine is more likely to go underneath the cabin instead of go through the cabin and end up in your lap. All right, next let's talk about some of the cons of a boxer engine design. Well, for starters, again, since this, and these engines are wider rather than taller when compared to other engines, there's gonna be less room on the sides for you to work on these engines. So let's see, you need to replace the spark plugs or the valve cover gasket is leaking and needs to be replaced. Well, you're gonna have less room to work on. Now, if you're doing this work yourself, it's not a huge deal. However, if you're doing this at a shop, they might charge you, well, not might, they will charge you a little bit more when you compare this to uh, doing the same repair on an inline engine design. But it's not just that. Again, since, uh, you know, let's say we're talking about this boxer engine specifically. This is a four-cylinder boxer engine, but however, when you compare it to an inline four-cylinder engine, since this boxer engine has two banks, it has almost a, the double the moving parts, at least when it comes to the top of the engine. So you get two camshafts, two camshaft sprockets, two camshaft sensors, two camshaft seals, two camshaft caps, uh, two head gaskets, exhaust manifold seals or gaskets, almost double everything. So not only it's harder to get to to fix, if anything goes wrong, uh, you also have more moving parts or double the moving parts almost when compared to an inline four cylinder. 
So again, more, so it basically means double the likelihood that you're gonna be spending money fixing stuff. Now, for those of you that are familiar with Subaru and their boxer engines, you're probably thinking, hey, Ratchets, there's a couple of things out there that go wrong with these engines that you need to mention. However, in my opinion, those are things that go wrong with Subaru's boxer engines, not boxer engines in general. And however, I will make a separate video for that because it's very important for, for people out there, which are apparently plenty, that are thinking, in, uh, thinking of buying a Subaru to know which years you might want to avoid, you know, what problems to look for and all that. And that video should be out in a week or so. All right, now besides that, I have an announcement to make and that is if you have ever thought of supporting me on my Patreon page, this is the time to do it because uh, we'll be doing a tool giveaway before the end of the year for members in the US and Canada because you know the tool, I can't really ship this tool overseas. But uh, since there's only 12 or 13 uh, people on my Patreon page right now, you have a good chance of winning this tool. <laughs> yeah, actually it won't be just one tool that I, will, that I will be giving away, it'll be more than one tool. So make sure you support me there. And if you can't, you can also support me by subscribing, hitting that bell notification and the like button and also checking out my other videos. I'll put links to two of them on this side of the screen that you can check out. There will be links down below in the description box as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.